Welcome to another retrospective for a Batman movie. Unfortunately, Adam West had passed away back in 2017 and it was his birthday or would have been his birthday on September 19th. So I figured in a way to kind of honor his interpretation of Batman and honor him as an overall actor, I feel like we should talk about the 1966 Batman movie based on the TV show from the 60s. Strap yourselves in, because this one is a doozy. So let's give a little bit of backstory to the creation of this movie, because this is actually over 50 years old. Well over 50. I think it's 57, if I'm not mistaken. But again, in the title card for this video, or should I say the thumbnail, it I put 50 years because I really don't like having odd or even numbers in my videos. So we're just going to say 50 years. So 50 years ago, Essentially, the Adam West series had gotten started, which was very wacky, it was very campy, a very different interpretation of the character than we're used to, and many blamed the TV show for creating the campy tone for Batman going forward, or creating that and not sticking to the character's darker roots. Arguably, I'd say that they're interpreting the comics very well for the time, considering the fact that Batman's antics had gotten pretty wacky and out there. With the success of the new TV show that they had released at the time, they then decided to capitalize on that and make a full feature length movie for the Batman TV shows to kind of promote it and make some extra income off of that fan base. And this is going to be classified as one of the most wild movies of all time in the superhero genre. Not in the sense that it's a bad movie because it specifically works for a product of its time and it also works for the type of Batman that there was at the time and it's really not meant to be taken super seriously neither. The 60s Batman was very much a parody show. It was meant to be very goofy, it was meant to be very silly, not taken very seriously and they really nailed it. <laughs> here, 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 take this. It's, it's a sad pill <laughs> to neutralize the laughing gas. <laughs> so the great aspects to this movie is the fact that if you guys are looking for a lot of fun and also just looking to have a ball, like invite some friends over, have some pizza and some wings and maybe a couple of drinks here and there, you sit there and you watch this movie, you're going to have a fun time. And even watching this movie without alcohol required, you can still have a fun time as well. Seeing as I'm doing this to honor Adam West, I do have to talk about Adam West. Adam West is a fantastic Batman for the time. The four of them, their forces combine. Holy nightmare, Batman, could it be? I don't know. But I think I know where to find a clue. Come on, Robin, to the Batcave. We haven't one moment to lose. Not my particularly favorite Batman, but at the same time, he fit the character very well at the time. And also, he kind of gives me, in a weird way, kind of some Val Kilmer-ish Batman vibes. Not necessarily with the over-the-top silliness, but more of just the way he kind of carries himself, the way he kind of changes the, his patterning of his voice. Say no more, Robin. It could be compromising. Of course. It's just one of those things in the life of every crime fighter. It means nothing. Snap on the bat cuffs. He did a really good job for the time, and he really was a lot of people's, including Matt Reeves, first Batman. Burt Ward is a great Robin. I don't think that there's been a Robin that's topped him. Now, arguably you could say the actor who plays as Robin in Titans does a good job, but in terms of Dick Grayson, he's never fully worked for me personally. Fuck that man. If you're talking about comic book accuracy, Burt Ward has it down pat. I think he's really, really good in the movie. He also adds to the humor as well because really Batman's supposed to be the world's greatest detective but if you notice in the movie, Robin's really the one solving most of these riddles. And as silly as this movie may be, 
I will say one thing I've absolutely loved about it is the fact that they do absolutely highlight the detective side of Batman, albeit some of these answers they get extremely randomly. What? Which ones? <sighs> Pretty fishy what happened to me on that ladder. You mean where there's a fish there could be a penguin? But wait, it happened at sea. See? See for Catwoman! But it's definitely more detective work than we've seen in a ton or maybe even a handful of overall Batman movies. It just was done really, really silly and wacky. That exploding shark was pulling my leg. The Joker. It all adds up to a sinister riddle. Riddler. Riddler? I'm talking about the villains, it's funny to see Cesar Romero in this movie still continuing the trend of not shaving off his mustache for the role of the Joker, which I'm not going to spend too much time talking about the Joker in this video considering the fact that the Joker may be one of Batman's greatest villains of all time, arguably is the most iconic villain of all time. He's really outshined by a lot of the other peers in this movie or the other villains. The Riddler, fantastic. I mean, you can also see a lot of inspiration for Paul Dano's interpretation, even Jim Carrey's interpretation of the Riddler in this movie. Miserable waddling mountebank of a bird. He couldn't finish a bag of popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> so say Penguin failed. All the more reason not to hand them your crazy clues. Oh, but I must, I must. Oh, outwitting Batman is my soul delight, my joy, my heaven on earth, my very paradise. <laughs> you showed me what was possible. You showed me all it takes is fear and a little focused violence. You inspired me. Pathetic psychopath. Begging for attention. You're gonna die oh, alone. No, 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 no! A nobody! No! Oh! Penguin, played by Burgess Meredith, I actually forgot how good he was as a penguin. And admittedly, Danny DeVito is still kind of my favorite penguin, even though he's always horny. Teach him my French flipper trick. But again, Burgess Meredith does play a really good interpretation of the character for the time, and really has the inflictions of the character down, and all the actions, and all the mannerisms of the character which you can see Danny DeVito directly had inspiration for his interpretation from Burgess Meredith's Penguin. Catwoman doesn't really have a much to her in this movie. I mean she's the love interest for Bruce Wayne that they have in this movie and I thought it was hilarious how after Batman discovers that Miss Kitka, her disguise name, and this movie turns out to be Catwoman, then they play like this really sad music montage in there. Again, this movie is a parody. It's absolutely a parody. I mean, the plot is very simple and straightforward. Batman and Robin have to stop the villains before they conquer the world. Very straightforward. But they throw a lot of wackiness in there and goofiness. That's just, it's a lot of fun. And if you really watched this opening scene and then thought that this was gonna be a serious movie, then that's your fault. The man has shark repellent, barracuda repellent, in his Batcopter. That right there lets you know the type of movie you're getting into. This is a parody. And the fact that everything is named Bat in this movie, they're really playing it up. It's meant to be silly, fun, entertaining. But I guess my biggest problem with this movie, outside of just a few minor things, like for example, the tone may not work for me personally for a Batman. 
but I understand it entirely and I've learned to accept it over time. I think that this movie doesn't really offer that much if you really look at it. I mean, sure, it's very unique in its own ways and it's very goofy and it's very fun, but that's something that the TV show has already done and already did. If you really look at this movie, it's more like an extended episode of that series. It just has a higher budget, so they're able to do more. Like they threw in a bat boat, they threw in a bat copter. So in terms of overall effectiveness as a film, I don't think it's super effective considering it doesn't do anything particularly new. Even for at the time, it actually plays things very safe and ultimately it can be looked as more a cash grab. But still, it does cement its way into the fan base with some iconic moments. I mean, that bomb running scene, just comedy gold. Some days you just can't get rid of a bomb. It's just pure silly fun, doesn't do anything super unique, doesn't do anything super super creative. It's really creative for the time but nothing unique from the actual TV show and it's just an extended episode into a feature length movie. So in that regard I do think that it doesn't really hold up quite as well but for the legacy that Adam West had created for that particular version of Batman and in many ways, if he didn't do this movie or this TV series, we probably wouldn't have any of the Batmans in live action, period. 